yet he spoke not of work till the last breath he drew then said father forgive them for they know not what they do oh tell me why oh tell me why did jesus die on calvary tell me why did he suffer such agony for god so loved this whole world that he gave his only son and that is why jesus died for you and me praise the lord i like it the way the lord gave it to us amen the communion of his the juice that we take is is represents the blood of jesus don't turn into the blood there's a lot of, of religions believe that the that the, the grape juice turns in the blood but it don't no it don't and they teach that the 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 bread that you take is the flesh of jesus but that's not true it's not true at all it represents his broken body man so i like it that way i like it that way it's back in the old testament time the first one in the book of exodus if you want to read in there i'm going to read a few scriptures out of it in the 12th chapter of exodus and it's talking about and it tells us in the first verse and it said and the lord spake unto moses and to aaron in the land of egypt saying this month shall be unto you as the beginning of months and it shall be the first month of the year to you speak ye unto all the congregation of israel saying in the tenth day of the month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for an house and if the household be too little for the lamb let him and his neighbors next unto his house take it according to the net number of the souls every man according to his eating shall make your your count for the lamb your lamb shall be without blemish you know that's this we know Jesus was without spot or blemish, without wrinkle. How many knew that? There was no sin in the life of Jesus. He was, he was holy. He was dedicated, which he probably, if he really wanted to, the devil tried to get him to sin, but he wouldn't. Amen. We know the scripture says when he was taken up into the wilderness, they, uh, Satan came to him after a fasting 40 days and 40 nights and said, Now, if you be the son of God, he was hungry. The Bible said he hungered. If you be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And Jesus quoted scripture to him. He said it's written in the book of, I believe it's in the Deuteronomy. It says that man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And that would have been tempting. Amen. I said that would have been tempting. He meant to turn that that stone in the bread but Jesus didn't take the devil's temptations he didn't want to pay any mind to him and didn't want to listen to him amen he just quoted scripture to him that's what we need to do sometimes and the enemy comes and said you know you can do this and it's not going to hurt you any just say devil get behind me Satan amen the temptations the Bible said we we're tempted in all points like he was tempted all points like Christ was tempted, we are tempted. And so we can overcome the temptation. How can we? Not in ourselves, but in the faith of God and in the trust of the Lord. So we know that Jesus was a lamb without spot or without wrinkle. And he stood, you know, and he didn't even try to uh, uh, offend himself when he stood before the the counsel there he didn't amen he didn't try to fight back and saying well i'm not going to let you do this i'm not going to let you crucify me but jesus amen knew that was his 
his plan. It was God's plan for him to be redempt and redemption for the sins of the whole world. Amen. God tried it many times. That's why he, he did the, the Passover here. He got this Passover, and they were supposed to observe it every year. Amen. And this is the original Passover. This is when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt's bondage. But he told them to take a lamb. And he said, let the lamb be without, without blemish, a male of the first year, and ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Amen. And they shall take of the blood and then you got to always require a sacrifice back in those days. Amen. It started in the Garden of Eden when Adam sinned and Eve sinned. Man, God had to take a lamb and slay the lamb for their sins. Say they tried to cover their sins themselves, which you cannot do. You cannot cover your sin. Amen. Like they did. They say, well, they, they seen that they were naked, so they made them. Uh, got some uh, skins and, or fig leaves rather and placed it on them to hide their, their nakedness. But it wasn't pleasing to God. God said, all right, he says, you're going to have to gonna take this lamb and slay this lamb so this lamb could cover your sins. The blood's going to cover your sins and then also the, the skins are going to cover your bodies and hide your nakedness. You know, before I believe that they had eat, eaten of that fruit, I believe they were covered with God's glory, God's Shekinah glory, and they couldn't see their nakedness. But when they become, amen, their eyes were open, after they ate the fruit, their eyes was open, and they seen the sin that they had committed and, and wrong that they had committed because they knew that they were naked. And so they did, like I said, they sewed fig leaves together and and they, when the Lord came down in the cool of the day to fellowship with them, they ran and ran and hid themselves from him. And the Lord called out to him and said, Adam, where are you? Amen. And, the, and Adam said, well, we're here. We're hiding in these bushes here. And he said, well, why are you hiding? Did you disobey and do what you weren't supposed to do? Amen, and they did. They did, they hid, and because of that, they, they left the fellowship. Thank God we can have fellowship with God today. Amen. Thank God we can have fellowship. You know, it'd be terrible if the Lord withdrew his spirit from us and we couldn't have fellowship with God. How many knew that? Men, I believe it was Eli's sons. They were sinful. Amen. I said they were sinful, and we know the scripture says that, that they were killed in, in battle and so forth. And Eli found out about it, and he fell off his, his stool that he was on, and, and he killed himself. And, and, and it, during the time that I believe one of the, the, the boys' wives were having, having a baby, when she found out that her husband was dead, she died. But in the birth of the child, she brought forth a child, and she called his name Ichabod. Ichabod means the, the glory is departed. When they disobey God and when you, you're not living for the Lord, God's not going to let his glory stay in there. God cannot compromise with sin. How many know that? And that's what I anger God so much in the scriptures when, when uh, the children of Israel begin to worship idols and become evil. And, and that word evil in there, when you read about it, it means that they were worshiping idols, worshiping a God that can't hear, a God that can't see, a God can't, that can't think. Amen. They were just, amen, worshiping a, an image that they had made, a man-made image. And it wasn't pleasing God. Anything we do, if it's not in God's glory or pleasing God, it's not pleasing Him. He's not pleased with it. How I many knows what we, we got to do is let God direct us and let God lead us. 
by his mighty hand. So God was making provisions here for the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt, after they come out of, well, before they come out of Egypt, God said, well, we're going to get out of here. Amen. All the plagues that came against Pharaoh and his, his gods were destroyed. And, and the last one was the first, I believe the firstborn is going to be killed. But he said, you're going to take this blood from the lamb and you're going to put it over the doorpost. How many knew that? Just put the, the blood over. He didn't put it on the, on the bottom. He put it on the sides and on the top. Amen. And when he said, I see the blood, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass over you. Somebody really got inspired when they learned, when they sang that song. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass. I will pass over you. And you know, the Lord Jesus, when he saves our soul, he applies the blood to us. How many know that? Once you confess your sin to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, that precious blood comes and washes you and cleanses you and amen, makes you one of God's children. So, amen, he's got the blood applied to your soul. And I believe in judgment day when we stand before God in judgment day, amen, he's going to look down through the list and he's going to see the blood. Amen. He's going to say, enter into the joys of the Lord. He's going to say, because you've been faithful in little things, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. Well, I'm getting kind of happy here tonight. Amen. They're talking about the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We sing another song that says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, amen. Oh, yes. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood. Isaiah said in the first chapter, the 16th verse, it says, Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. Glory to God. God's pure. I said God's blood's pure. And it'll wash not part of your sins away. It'll wash all of your sins away. Hallelujah. And that's what he's talking about. When he says, take that blood, apply it to the doorpost. Everyone stay inside there. Don't you come out for any reason. Don't come out from the from the promises of God and the blessings of God. Stay in the safety zone. Praise God. Stay where God's spirit is and where God's blessings are. Don't come out from amongst it. Stay there. Be ready when he comes in the clouds of glory. Amen. They took that lamb. You know, I wondered sometimes, why did the Lord tell them to take the lamb and just keep it in their house until the 14th day? Amen, I believe he was trying to, to get them familiar with the lamb. Amen, get, make, kind of make a pet out of it. No one wants to see their pet slain. How many know that? You've got a pet. You don't want to see your pet slain. Amen. And, and so uh, they, they took this lamb, and as I said, the, the 14th day, they took it and they slayed it, and they boiled it and cooked it rather. However, they did that in them days. I don't know exactly, but he roasted, I believe he said. He'd been taken and roasted and everyone eat of it. You know, there was a purpose in eating that, that lamb like that. It was not just because they were hungry. There was a purpose. They eat the lamb because it was for the healing of their bodies. How many knew that? Jesus, he bore all the stripes on his back. He was whipped, beaten in Pilate's judgment hall. Then he was taken out there, amen, and put a cross on his back and he carried it up to Calvary's cross to redeem our souls from sin. Praise God. He took it all. Man, you know, somebody said, well, when, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, the Pharisees and the scribes, they said, well, come on down off of that cross if you be the son of God, making fun of him. Jesus could have come down, but he wouldn't. Why? Because if he'd have come down off the cross, none of us would be saved here today. None of us. 
So he it was endured to the end, suffered the pain. I, I can't express the suffering and the pain and the agony and the excruciating pain that Jesus went through in order to redeem us. But for everything that Jesus went through, it had a purpose for us to redeem us. The blood washes our sins away and redeems us, but the body that was beaten was beaten for our healing and for our deliverance so that we could be made whole. How many knows that? I believe Jesus still works miracles. I believe he can still heal these bodies. Man, you know, one place Jesus couldn't do very many works because the Bible says uh, because uh, they, didn't, they, they, they didn't believe him. They said, well, we know him. He's the carpenter's son. He's been around here for a long time. And he comes around here and said that he's the, the son of God. They couldn't accept that. Amen. So they wouldn't bring their sick and their afflicted that needed a touch of, of God in their life. And, and they just doubted him. But Jesus is our savior. And he's our healer. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes were healed. Glory to God. And not only one time, it said in other times, amen, he's a healer, praise God. Peter said, by his stripes we were healed. He had paid the price to redeem our soul. But that was what the lamb was for, for the healing of their bodies. Because it says that was their, when they ate the lamb, and they told him, he said, you be all ready to go. Be prepared to get out of this town as soon, amen, as the, the word is given, and be ready to go. And he says, and there was not one feeble one amongst them. Not one. The older people. They had to be, God had to renew their youth and re strengthen them in order for them to be able to, to, to get up and go out and, and follow the, the, the crowd of people with thousands of people that were leaving out of Egypt. Thousands of them. Not just a few, but thousands of them were leaving out of Egypt and not one feeble one amongst them. And I believe that's what God says in his word, and I'm believing, I'm trusting it. it it's the truth. I said it's the truth. I mean, why did they do this? Because he said at midnight, amen, at midnight there's going to be, an, I guess it was an angel that went through the midst of the, of the city there. And as he went through and as he walked by, he looked on the houses and he seen the blood and he passed on by. Praise God. I don't know, maybe there was some of the Egyptians here. Maybe they said, well, I believe what Moses is talking about, so I'm going to go in the house with them, and I'll be in there, amen, because they did have some strangers in the bunch. That's what the Bible said when they left. They were some strangers there. Man. And it said in the, over in the 12th verse, or the 37th verse, rather, it said that the children of Israel journeyed from Ramus to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. That's a lot of people, right? Come out of Egypt. Why? Because they obeyed the Lord. One scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. All disobedience is as witchcraft and as adultery, the scripture says. So we want to be obedient to the spirit of the Lord. But like I said earlier, I says, I like it the way the Lord gave it to us better. Because he didn't have to kill a lamb. He was already, the son of God was slain. Amen. The lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. And let me read just a little bit this. When, when they went in the upper room, all the, the uh, disciples were there. And the Lord told him, he said, one of you are going to betray me. You know, that's kind of hard to believe. But, you know, if you read some of that Old Testament scriptures, people, they rebelled against God a lot of times. They turned from God. Even some of the, the, the ones like uh, David, and they failed the Lord. Solomon failed God, didn't they? 
Man, the other ones, Hezekiah, amen, he felt, he felt God somewhere down through the line. But anyway, God forgives. God forgives the vilest sinner. You know, if they worship idols and they ask God to forgive them like David did, David, amen, repented of his wrong that he had done, and he said that he was, we wanted to obey the Spirit of God and do what God wanted him to do, and because of it, God forgave him and put him in, the, amen, as the king of Israel, amen, a ruler of the people of that day. And one of, matter of fact, he was one of the greatest kings that they were of that time. And we know he's going to be another great king in the next life, in the millennial reign. How many know that? As David's going to be there reigning and ruling with the righteous. We're going to where we're going to go one day. We'll never die. So you mean you're going to live forever? Not on this earth, no. But in the next one, when God gives us a new body, amen, we're going to live forever. Our soul's going to live forever. You know, when Jesus comes back in the clouds, he's going to bring the souls that's with him that already passed on and is in heaven. He's going to bring all those souls back and he's going to put them in those bodies that were in the, the graves and he's going to resurrect them to a new life. Man, the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Man, don't make any difference how long they've been in the grave. Man, Glory. But they're going to resurrect one day. You know, I was thinking earlier, I had an opportunity to go to Israel back years ago, and it was a great thing. It was a great trip, and it's something you will never forget. And I remember going to David's tomb where they, amen, said David was buried there. You know, in Jerusalem, they buried him, amen, like the family. They buried him in a family uh, a tomb. I oh, was able to go to the tomb. And see where David was was buried. You know, and they said, well, one time they had crowns of gold there. But somebody broke in the tomb and stole the golden crowns off and took them away. Amen. But that's one thing we won't have to worry about when we get to heaven because the streets are going to be made of pure gold. The streets are gold. The buildings are gold. It's going to be a beautiful place. You know, if you read about Solomon when he built the temple and he spent millions and billions of dollars, not just a few million, billions of dollars, amen, of beautifying the temple of God, the holy place. And it was so fascinating. People came from all over to see that beautiful place. Man, it took the breath. You ever see something? Sometimes you see it for the first time. I remember when we went, to, went over to the Grand Canyon. The first time that I've ever seen it, it kind of took my breath because of its beauty there. Hey, man. And I imagine it was probably the same thing back then when, uh, when they went to see the, the, the temple that Solomon built. It took hundreds and thousands of men to build that temple. It took them seven years to build it, but they put all of the precious gems and jewels and silver and gold and any kind of, of precious metals that they had into that temple that made it so beautiful. And then after a while, they just let it go and they dropped out of it and they lost out, left after David died. Amen, went to pot. How many knew that? When, when what was it, Manasseh, Amen, not Manasseh, but Solomon got in there, took it. Amen, all the, all the time of worship and everything that they had present, put into it and all the time they put into it, it, it was gone. Why? Because people had done everything in their own way and not God's way. That's why I want to be in the, in the will of the Lord, don't you? I don't want to fail God no way. Amen. Sometimes the devil makes you think you failed him. Somehow you failed the Lord, but Lord, don't let me fail you in any way because I want, amen, I want to be what you want me to be so I can be with you in glory because, you know, he told us that we are faithful in the little things. He's going to make us ruler over many. We've got to be faithful over 
the things that the temptations and the and the things that we go through and in obedience unto the Lord we've got to be faithful in that because if we're faithful in it then one day when we get into into the presence of God God's going to say enter into the joys of the Lord because you've been faithful clean <laughs> confiding I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be moved I shall not be I shall not be moved I shall not be I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be I shall not be moved. 